do a quick uh, video that uh, talks about the process that I've been using to locate some interesting rocks and fossils here in Southern Colorado. As you can see on the screen, I've colored Southern Colorado Rock Meta. Um, so where we're going to start with this is we're going to go ahead and bring up the first website that I'm going to recommend. Um, all right, so we, we're starting at the sort of the um, top down, uh, most useful site that I found for getting started. This is um, macrostrat.org. Brings up a interact uh, uh, interactive map that you can use to kind of look at the part of the country that you're interested in. Uh, we're here specifically interested in Colorado, uh, Southern Colorado. Um, you can see it's got a lot of details, so we're going to zoom on in. Uh, we have been looking in this particular region. Um, and so this is going to give us a list of little white dots here of all the various sites where there are uh, records. Um, which is a useful place to start. Um, the other way of accessing this data, uh, which I found to be really handy because you can install it on a cell phone, is this uh, website rocked, R-O-C-K-D.org. -O um, and so what you'll start with is a map that looks something like this. You zoom into the area you're interested in. Uh, and in this case, we're looking in the uh, Southern Colorado Pueblo region. You can see on the map, it shows a variety of these different colors. These all represent a variety of different um, uh, layers. Um, and so if you click on them and you bring them up, you will have a little pop up here that talks about the layer itself, the age, the, uh, the stratigraphic name, the kind of the description. Um, they also have what I thought was really helpful is the literature. They're going to link to a number of different studies that get into more uh, detail. So if you're looking to um, get a little more uh, um, more evidence based with what you're looking for, uh, these are some good ways to uh, just get more into uh, the various information that's out there. Um, and they have it separated based on um, uh, paleogeography. Uh, they also have it based on the different deep time eras, which I thought is pretty helpful. Um, again, just scroll down. They've got a bunch of different uh, references that are specific to this uh, particular uh, layer. Um, the area I was exploring last time was here in the Pueblo SWA, which is, you can see, Lake, Lake Pueblo State Park. It was in this area here. Um, and you can see this layer is represented by the Carlisle Shale, Greenhorn Limestone, and Graneros Shale. Uh, Lake Cretaceous, you can see the estimated ages here. Um, this doesn't get into the the uh, the more detailed breakdown. And so what you can do is you could take something like a search term like Greenhorn Limestone, which is where I was looking last time. Um, you pull that up in uh, Wikipedia, and they have some great information here. Um, and so it will show you the unit itself, uh, where it can be found, and then the subunits, which is really helpful. Um, and so it'll break this down into individual constituent uh, subunits. So as part of that, you're going to find in Colorado, the Lincoln Limestone, the Heartland Shale, and the Bridge Creek Limestone. Um, and so this is going to give you an idea of what you're looking at in terms of the different layers, which is, again, really helpful. With this information, you can also pull up um, another great website, which is um, called uh, paleobiodb.org. Uh, again, again, we'll bring up a world map bunch of different information. So we're going to zoom back into the place we're looking for, which is Southern Colorado, and scroll over. You can see a bunch of these different colored dots, and these are representative of different um, time eras, which you can see represented here on the bottom in deeper uh, geologic time. And you can see that the area I was looking at before in the Pueblo Reservoir area was from the late Cretaceous. Um, and primarily what you're going to find is what you can see here on the right. These are uh, taken from studies um, where they've uh, basically gone through, sifted through the material, and uh, went through with mic microscopes and various um, sorting mechanisms to find specifically what was in those uh, layers. And so if you're interested in, in looking for a particular type of organism, um, you can find that here on the right. And you can see the different colors. So 
This would be representative of the Jurassic. So if you're interested in things that would have been represented or alive during that time period, you can do that that way. Um, Ordovician, another really interesting time period. Um, Cretaceous. And so, um, and they have some newer ones, the Cenozoic uh, timescale over here in Florence. So this will really kind of give you an idea of where to look, um, depending on what you look, you're interested in. The other way of doing it is you can, up in the upper left-hand corner here, you can look based on what you might be interested in. I'm in, interested in um, the Ammonids. Um, and so I could click on that and it will give me a specific list. So if I clicked on that, it'll show me the places where um, this particular uh, genus um, has been found. And so you can see that there's a, I was doing a, I pulled up a paper that was talking about some of the, I believe this is one of the Comanche National Grassland sites here. Um, and they'll talk about uh, the layer it's found in. So the Pierre Shale layer, which is above um, like the Greenhorn limestone, it's a more recent deposition. Um, and then from there, you can see the occurrences of different fossils. And so they'll break it down. You can take this information and um, depending on the sites, you're going to see there's different ones here. But what you could always do is take this, uh, take this uh, genus and species name, uh, search and pull this up. And it'll give you an idea of kind of the different what the fossils might look like. Um, you're going to have to get a little more detailed because what you're going to find here is often not super accurate, but uh, you can, with a little bit more um, detailed searching, you can find um, exactly what you you might be looking for before you go out into the field. Um, I pulled up some different ones here that I was interested in, I'm hoping to get out and do, um, uh, looking through some of these layers to find some ammonids, the last time I was finding more bivalves, which was representative of the um, uh, inomids. Um, the other place that, um, if you're having a hard time finding the actual papers, um, if you wanted to look a little bit more into like the uh, process they were using to um, decalcify the, um, the fossils, uh, kind of look at their protocols, how they're doing it, um, a lot of that's in the papers. Um, I highly recommend taking a look at either uh, Google Scholar, which you can see I typed in some search words, comes up with some decent stuff. Um, or if you're not finding what you need there or it's not accessible, the other place to go to is Sci-Hub. Really great. Um, just be looking for your uh, DOI reference. You just pop it into Sci-Hub um, and you can find a lot of really great resources here for research papers. Um, uh, highly recommended. Um, also, LibGen, useful. Type in some uh, different search terms and you can find, you know, real, some really, um, really great information. If you're looking to go just beyond um, some of the basic stuff, like I mentioned at the very beginning, which involves looking at the depositional layer. Um, and like we were talking about before, the Greenhorn Limestone. So this is a, a subset showing the different sites here with the little white dots. I don't know if we can zoom in any closer. So yeah, so we're back here in the Pueblo for example, we're back here in the Pueblo Reservoir area. You can see the little white dots there. And so this is showing you the uh, lithography, meaning what you're going to find in terms of the, um, the constituents of this particular layer. Um, and then, of course, what the environment looked like. Really useful. Uh, it gives you the more specifics um, for the actual um, closer range of dates. So you're talking about the Cenomanian or the Turonian um, 95 to 92 million years ago. Um, the thickness of the layer, the different types of things that were found in this layer. Um, and like I said, basically microstrat.org and rocked.org, basically it's the same data. Um, they're just kind of two different interfaces for it. Um, and then from here, like I said, you can take this information, uh, go over to Wikipedia, some really great, uh, more detailed information there. And then from here, based on the layer you're looking at, you can pop it over to this other site, paleobiodb.org and then get a much more specific list of different fossils that have been found. Now, this isn't obviously the entire range. It's entirely possible that you're going to find things that have not been classified. Um, these are just a few papers, and there's probably a lot more out there that has not been officially classified in any um, scientific literature. Um, but this at least gives you a starting point of what you might find. Um, if there's any other sites out there that people have used that they find to be helpful, I definitely would appreciate um, linking that below um, or anything else that you use to uh, do your pre-hunting, pre-searching activities before you go out in the field. Um, 
there are a lot of times where I just go out there and find what I find wherever I happen to be. Um, but sometimes it does help to know exactly what you're looking for, what the layer looks like. Um, and you can do a lot of that here before you ever set foot out of the house, which is kind of what I highly recommend if you want to have some success and you're not just out there um, justifying a long leisurely walk. Um, yeah, so like I said, if you have any additional information you'd like to share, please comment that. And uh, I hope to update this as I get more information and as I have more success out there. I will definitely uh, continue to update how I'm going about and uh, getting out into the field. All right, I'll catch you guys later.